commas are considered half stop punctuation marks. They're more of a pause. Other half stop punctuation marks include parentheses and dashes, which are beyond the scope of this lesson, but I will include a link down below for how to learn more about parentheses and dashes. Commas, if they're used incorrectly, can change the meaning of a sentence in a way that makes it incorrect or just completely confusing. So that doesn't happen to you. I want to go over the main ways that commas are used um, in writing, and you'll also often see commas tested on standardized tests. The first one is probably the most common that you are used to seeing, is commas are used for a list of three or more things. For example, Carlos wants to visit Paris, Italy, Germany, and China. There's four things here listed. I do want to point out that I did put a comma here before the word and. This comma is often called the Oxford comma, and it's quite debated. It seems as though in modern text they are accepting the Oxford comma, although if you chose to not include it, it would be okay. In the next example, I like to go hiking, fishing, swimming, and camping during the summer. Pretty straightforward. And it doesn't have to be a list of just single word things. It can be like this next example. I have to clean my room, walk my dog, and take out the trash. So in this case, um, each thing in the list was more than one word, and that was fine. We still put commas in between them. Another way that we use commas, and maybe one that you haven't seen before, is if you're separating two adjectives. The trick here is that if you can put the word and in between two adjectives, a comma would also work. For instance, the hungry and green and slimy Martian opened the door and ate my cat. Oh, that's unfortunate. But I could also just put commas in between. The hungry, green, slimy Martian opened, my door, opened the door and ate my cat. Still sad but it's quicker to read. Get to the point. The hot, comma, spicy, comma, squid stew looks delicious. Be careful on problems like this. Even though squid could appear to be an adjective, it is actually part of the subject of the sentence, stew. So be careful for the times that adjectives appear to be independent when really they're actually paired up with a noun or another adjective, like in this next example. She wrapped the gift in striped bright pink paper. Bright pink is one entire adjective. Don't put a comma between bright and pink. A good way to check it is to think would I put the word and in between that? Would I say bright and pink paper? No. If you don't put the word and, then a comma would not be appropriate in this case either. Another example where we, or another situation where we use commas is when we're dealing with quotes. I would like you to try to remember the rule, word, comma, quote. It doesn't matter where things are placed, it always goes in this order. Word, comma, quote, whether it's at the beginning of a sentence, the middle of a sentence, or the end of a sentence. I would like you to use comma lightly. Um, sometimes it's another punctuation mark, but I'm gonna stick to commas for here. So you see in this first example, he said, comma, we need to lower taxes. Word, comma, quote. My mother sighed, comma, you ate all the cookies, comma, with an exasperated expression. Word, comma, quote, for side, comma, quote word, comma, quote, for cookies, comma, quote. That comma's inside the quote. If I don't wake up in time, comma, he whispered, comma, I will be in trouble. Even when it's on the outside of a quote. Time, comma, quote, whispered, comma, quote. And notice that that situation can be expanded to include punctuation mark like here, trouble, period, quote. So, the word comma quote rule is nice and has a ring to it, but it should really be word punctuation mark quote. Another way we use commas is when we're separating out non-essential information. Non-essential information is information that's not necessary for the meaning of the sentence. For instance, Michelle and her best friend, comma, Jenny, comma, went to dinner. Saying the name Jenny is not necessary in the sentence because Michelle only has one best friend. However, in the next example, Michelle and her friend Jenny went to dinner. I'm not going to put commas because we're going to hope that Michelle has many friends 
and I do need to say the name Jenny to distinguish which friend she is with. By putting commas around the word Jenny, it's telling me it's non-essential and I can understand the sentence without it. If I just said Michelle and her friend went to dinner, I don't know who her friend is. So in this case, the second example, I would not include commas. In the first case, case she only has one best friend, so I, commas are okay because I don't need to say her name. By the same logic, if I'm talking about an author's best-selling novel, they only have one best-selling novel. For that reason, I don't need to say the name of the novel, so I can put commas around the name of the novel because if I just say it's his best-selling novel, I know what you're referring to. So commas separate out non-essential information. Be careful it's not always with a name. It depends on if it's essential or not. Before I move on, I just want to clarify some differences between an independent and a dependent clause. An independent clause is something that's able to be independent. It can stand on its own. It's a complete sentence, and it doesn't necessarily have to be a long um, clause. For example, an independent clause can be as short as she knows. A dependent clause, on the other hand, depends on something else for it to be complete. It is an incomplete sentence, and it's relying on the rest of the sentence. Often, but not always, a dependent clause can begin with a subordinating conjunction, and I listed a bunch of them here for you. And a dependent clause doesn't have to be short. It can be long. Because the weather is good and we have the day off work, and there should be more, because it depends on the rest. When you're dealing with a sentence that has independent and dependent, you have to separate them by a comma. The independent dependent can come in various orders. For example, here, if the independent is first and the dependent is second, we call that a concluding element. It doesn't really matter. We just need to put a comma in between. Everyone politely ate the meal. This is independent. Even though it tasted like dog food, this is dependent. And notice that it's starting with the subordinating conjunction, even though. Because I have an independent and a dependent in the same sentence, I need to separate them with a comma. That comma is kind of hard to read. There we go. Because if I got rid of the dependent and just read everyone politely ate the meal, that would be a complete sentence. But if I only read even though it tasted like dog food, it would be an incomplete sentence. When I put them together, I need to separate them with a comma. Same logic here. Sue wrote poems throughout the years independent, leaving behind a legacy, dependent. I need to put a comma in between. Notice that this dependent clause did not start with a subordinating conjunction, so it doesn't always. Now in this next example, she enjoys reading because it gives her an escape from her troubles. And you think, oh, independent, dependent, I'm going to put a comma here. Wrong. There is a rule. Never put a comma before the word because. This is actually not a dependent. The because is linking the two together, so we need to keep them together as one whole sentence. What I'm saying is that just because I could break a sentence into independent, dependent, doesn't mean I necessarily need to. One way, and it's kind of a cheap way, but one way to test it out is to do an exaggerated pause. On the first one, everyone politely ate the meal, even though it tasted like dog food. That sounds okay. On the last one, she enjoys reading because it gives her an escape from her troubles. Ugh, sounds kind of weird. That's a clue that a comma should not be there. That's not a foolproof method, so I'd still rather you know the strategies, but keep in mind that you do not put a comma before the word because. In the last examples, dependent came after the independent. We could also have the dependent come first. For instance, to become an astronaut. That is dependent. And then the independent can come next. It takes much work and determination. Here I would go ahead and put a comma. And a good clue of knowing if this is in the right place is let's say I picked up the independent and put it in front. It takes much work, hard work and determination to become an astronaut. Ah, because it works that way, I know the comma is in the right place. As my sister slumbered, that's dependent. I tossed and turned in the bed next to her. 
So we're going to put a comma between, and you can always switch the order. I tossed and turned in the bed next to her as my sister slumbered. That works. Now on this next one, because she is only 12, she is not old enough to drive, you might start freaking out thinking there's a because, there's a because. You told me some rule I remember about commas and because. Well, the rule was that you can not put a comma before the word because. Putting a comma before this because wouldn't make sense since because is at the very beginning of the sentence. If that's not the reason for your panic, but the reason for your panic is remembering that first grade teacher who screamed at you, never start a sentence with because, I want you to take that rule and adjust it in your memory. Your teacher was trying to teach you to answer with complete sentences. They didn't want to ask you, why do you want to be a teacher when you grow up? And you say, because I like learning. They wanted you to say, I want to be a teacher when I grow up because I like learning. So they just started saying to you, don't start a sentence with because. But really, it's okay grammatically now that you're older and wiser to start a sentence with because as long as you realize that that makes it dependent and you're going to need a comma with the independent clause afterwards. So because has some funny rules. Let's go ahead and move on. In the last couple examples, I had the independent at the beginning or the independent at the end. There is an exam a situation where the independent can be interrupted by a dependent. Let's go over some examples. Gold watches, for example, are going on sale today. When I have a dependent interrupting an independent, I need to put commas surrounding it, kind of like the non-essential information. Basically what I'm saying is, if I got rid of this dependent and read it the whole way through, it should make sense. It should be an independent clause, a complete sentence. Gold watches are going on sale today. If it does make sense, that means that my commas are in the correct place, separating out the dependent that interrupts from the independent. Let's take a look at the next one. Years later, at a family event, Lee discovered the cherished book. In this case, you can also put a comma before and after at a family event because I could just say, years later, Lee discovered the cherished book. The dependent that interrupts could also be a little bit longer. Traveling across time zones, particularly via airplane, can be exhausting. So you could have a longer segment interrupting an independent. A good way, again, to check is to skip over the dependent and make sure the independent is, in fact, independent. Traveling across time zones can be exhausting. The last way that we use commas is involving something called fanboys. Fanboys stands for for and nor but or yet so. These are coordinating conjunctions, a little different than the conjunctions I had up above, but still kind of serving the same purpose in weakening a statement to make it dependent. For instance, if I have the independent clause, we will go to the restaurant now, and then the dependent clause, for we are very hungry, I'm encountering a situation I had before with independent dependent. But I know I need a comma here with this fanboy because something else is going on. If you look up here, I actually have, let me erase this. I have independent, fanboy, and then another independent. So my first independent has a fanboy for, which is a fancy way of saying since. And then it's followed by another independent. We are very hungry. Because it's independent, independent, separated by a fanboy, I must put a comma before the fanboy. The fanboy is weakening the independent at the end to make it dependent, so it's similar to the condition we had up above. This is important to recognize even though it seems like it's the same rule because you can have some variations going on here. I'm going to show you in the next one. Terry is working on a project. That's independent. He should be finished within the next week. That's independent. It's separated by the fanboy and, so I must put a comma in between it. But here's what I want you to think. What if I got rid of the word he? Terry is working on a project is still independent. But 
should be finished within the next week is no longer independent and the fanboy is still here. If I get rid of the word he, which makes the second part of the sentence no longer independent, and I'm using a fanboy, I should not include the comma. You only include the comma with a fanboy if the second part is independent. And removing that word he changes the whole thing. I'm going to show you a few more examples. I do not like biology, independent. Do I like chemistry? Sounds kind of weird, but technically it is an independent statement and it's separated by the fanboy nor. So we need to put a comma before the nor. They like chocolate. They like vanilla better because it's separated by the fanboy but. I need to put a comma in front of it, but I want you to think about this. What if I got rid of the word they? They like chocolate but like vanilla better is okay, but since the second part is no longer independent, if I got rid of the word they, I'd also have to get rid of the comma. A few more. We can go to the zoo, independent. We can go to the movie theater, independent. Separated by the fanboy or so I'm going to put a comma here. But again, what if I got rid of the we? We can go to the zoo or, I can even get rid of all this, to the movie theater. To the movie theater is no longer independent, so if I'm going to get rid of we can go and force that to become dependent, I need to also get rid of the comma in front of the fanboy. The comma in front of the fanboy only applies if it's independent, independent, separated by a fanboy. James wants to leave now. We must wait for his little brother. Separated by the fanboy yet. Put a comma in front of it. Oops, wrong color. They have already completed their essays. Lindsay is busy correcting them. That's me. So we're going to go ahead and put a comma before the fanboy. So hopefully this demystifies commas a little bit for you. There's obviously some other ways we use commas, like with dates or addresses or titles. Um, but these are the main ways to use them, the ones that you'll encounter in your writing and also on standardized tests. Just a quick recap, you use them in a list of three or more things. You use them to separate two adjectives. You use them in quotes, remember the rule, word, comma, quote. You use them to separate non-essential information. There has to be something in the sentence to tell you that it's non-essential, like best friend or best-selling novel. We use them to separate independent and dependent clauses no matter what the order, whether the independence in the beginning or the independence at the end, or the independent gets interrupted by a dependent. And we also put commas in front of fanboys when it's in a sentence with independent, independent. Remember that if we change the second independent to be dependent, there no longer should be a comma in front of the fanboy. I'll provide some links below for other resources that are relevant to this, including some information about the parentheses and dashes, which are also half-stop punctuation marks. Good luck with your writing and also your standardized tests.